All right, so welcome to the deep dive. Yeah. Today, uh, we're diving into a speech. Um, pretty interesting one. Okay. It's by Vivek Ramaswamy. Yeah. He's a Republican presidential candidate, as you probably know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he gave this speech at a rally for Donald Trump. I see. So kind of a fascinating backdrop, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And in it, he really tries to lay out his vision for what America should look like in 2024. Okay. And some of the big themes he hits on are unity, exceptionalism, and, you know, a return to traditional values. Mm, Interesting. So what we want to explore is, is he... You know, tapping into like a genuine yearning for purpose and togetherness in the country, right? Or is this, you know, kind of more of a calculated political strategy that yeah. might actually end up excluding as much as it includes? You know, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, th- these ideas, unity, exceptionalism, traditional values, right? They've always been kind of woven into the fabric of American dialogue, right? For centuries, really. Yeah. yeah. But they're complicated, right? They're not simple, straightforward concepts. Mm, right. Like, take American exceptionalism. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Throughout history, that idea has been used to justify everything from, you know, westward expansion to military interventions overseas and yeah. traditional values. Well, that's a loaded one. That's a real can of worms, right? <laughs> I mean, it's been invoked to both uphold and challenge social norms, depending on who's using it and when. Right. So I think it's important, before we even dive into Ramaswamy's speech, to kind of acknowledge the historical baggage these concepts carry. Yeah, for sure. You know. And he doesn't shy away from, uh, you know, really critiquing the current political landscape either. He really goes after what he calls the woke agenda. He even puts it in the same category as things like transgenderism and climatism. Wow. You know, he even connects these ideas to, like, the fentanyl crisis and the rising suicide rate. Okay, so we're not pulling any punches here. No, it's strong stuff for sure. Yeah, the language is definitely in charge. Yeah. Especially that word woke. I mean, that's become a real lightning rod in our political discourse. For sure. You know, for some people, it represents a genuine push for social justice, for equality. Right. But for others, it's this kind of catch-all term for anything they perceive as an attack on, you know, traditional values Mm -hmm. or a threat to American identity. Yeah, yeah. And Ramaswamy is clearly tapping into that second interpretation. Right. He's painting this picture of a nation under siege by these forces. Right. And it seems like he sees Trump as, like, the answer to all this, right? Mm. How so? Well, he links Trump's policies, you know, things like mass deportations Mm. and his focus on meritocracy to this vision of a unified America that he's laying out. Yeah, he's arguing that policies like those are necessary to, like, restore a sense of national pride, a sense of purpose. Right. But that raises a really interesting question, doesn't it? Yeah. Can you really build a vision of unity on policies that a lot of people see as exclusionary? Right, right. That's where it gets tricky, right? Like, how do you reconcile this message of unity with policies that could actually end up pushing people further apart? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, take those mass deportations, for example. Yeah. He frames it as, you know, upholding the rule of law. Right. But for immigrant communities, it's terrifying. Sure. It creates this, like, constant fear and instability. Right. And then there's the whole idea of meritocracy. Yeah. We have to remember that not everyone starts from the same place. Exactly. Not everyone has the same opportunities. Right. So if you just blindly promote meritocracy without acknowledging those systemic inequalities, yeah. well, you often end up just reinforcing the existing power structures. Right. And the disparity. Yeah. So it's more complicated than just saying, like, work hard and you'll succeed. Exactly. It's about understanding how historical and social factors can create these barriers right. that prevent people from even having a fair shot. Yeah, for sure. You know. And it's not just about immigrants either, right? No, definitely not. He talks directly to, like, black Americans, gay Americans, millennials, Gen Z. Right. He's really trying to connect with a broad audience here. Absolutely. And I think the way he tailors his message to each group is really revealing. Yeah. Like, for example, he tells black Americans that he wants for them what he wants for all Americans. Okay. Safe streets, good jobs. And a country where you're judged on your character, not the color of your skin. Right. But then how does that square with his support for policies that, you know, critics argue have historically disadvantaged black communities? Exactly. Yeah. It feels like he's walking this tightrope. Yeah. 
trying to appeal to all these different groups <laughs> while still staying true to this very specific set of conservative values. Right. Like, you know, when he tells the gay Americans, you're free to marry, but I oppose transgender rights. Yeah, that's a really delicate balancing act. Yeah, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's trying to tap into this longing for unity, this desire to go back to traditional values. Yeah. But he's doing it in a political landscape where those very values are being debated and contested. Yeah, it's a really complex picture. It is. And I think we need to like dig deeper into his messaging and the broader cultural context to really understand what he's trying to do here. Definitely. So it feels like we're really getting to the heart of it now. Yeah. This tension between his vision of unity and the policies he's promoting. Right. So what are like some of the concrete things he's calling for? Like what does he actually want to see happen? Well, he proposes some pretty radical changes actually. Okay, like what? For example, he wants to see Election Day become a national holiday. Okay. With everyone voting on a single day. Okay. Using only paper ballots and government issued ID. Huh. Interesting. He says it's about restoring faith in our elections. Yeah, that sounds like it's directly addressing those concerns about voter fraud that have been going around. Exactly. But I mean, is there really evidence to support that claim? That's a good question. And logistically, wouldn't a single voting day create huge challenges? Yeah, for sure. Especially for people who have to work or who have, you know, other commitments. Absolutely. I mean, those are exactly the questions critics are raising. Yeah. Like, while some people might see these measures as, you know, common sense ways to ensure election integrity. Right. Others worry that they could actually make it harder for some people to vote. Right. Disenfranchise voters. Exactly. Particularly those in low income communities who might face barriers to obtaining ID or taking time off work. Yeah. And, you know, research actually shows that instances of widespread voter fraud are incredibly rare. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. He also talks a lot about the deep state. Oh, yeah. Those unelected bureaucrats, he claims, have too much power. Right. He even calls for mass deportation. Really? Not of immigrants this time, of mm. feral bureaucrats. Wow, that's quite a statement. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It really shows you how deep this distrust of government runs. Right. In certain segments of the population. Mm. Yeah. He's tapping into this idea that you know, these unelected elites are the ones really pulling the strings. Right. Undermining the will of the people. Yeah. He's basically saying the system is rigged against right. everyday Americans. Yeah. And I guess for those who feel like they've been ignored or marginalized mm -hmm. by the political establishment. Yeah. That message can be really powerful. Absolutely. It speaks to that sense of frustration. Right. Powerlessness that a lot of people feel. Yeah. And he presents Trump. As the solution, you know, right. the outsider who can come in and dismantle this so-called deep state. Yeah. Return power to the people. But how does all of this fit with his vision of national unity? Right. And restoring American ideals. That's a good point. It seems like he's kind of relying on this strategy of dividing people into us versus them. Yeah. I mean, that's the paradox, isn't it? Yeah. He's calling for unity while simultaneously demonizing entire groups of people. Right. Immigrants, woke activists, federal employees. It's a very exclusionary approach, I think. Yeah. One that defines American identity in a way that leaves very little room for dissent. Yeah. Or for those who don't fit neatly into his worldview. Yeah, he even goes as far as to say that Donald Trump is the president who will unite this country. Yeah. But, I mean, Trump has been such a polarizing figure. Oh, yeah. How can someone who's sparked so much division be seen as a unifier? It is kind of fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it, for his supporters, yeah, Trump represents a break from the status quo. Right. You know, a rejection of what they see as a, a corrupt and ineffective political establishment. Mm -hmm. They admire his willingness to challenge norms. Yeah. Speak his mind, even if it means alienating others. So for them, unity seems to be less about bringing diverse perspectives together. Right. And more about rallying behind a strong leader mm -hmm. who shares their grievances. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. And isn't there a danger in that? Oh, for sure. This kind of romanticizing of a past that maybe never even existed. Yeah. It seems like he's overlooking all the systemic inequalities and injustices that have always been a part of American history. Yeah, that's crucial, right? When we just focus on this nostalgic vision of the past, yeah. we risk ignoring the real struggles right. and the complexities of the present. 
Yeah. We fail to acknowledge the progress that's been made mm -hmm. while also, you know, perpetuating harmful stereotypes and power imbalances. Right. So this whole conversation raises some really big questions yeah. about the future of American identity in our political system. For sure. What happens when such a large segment of the population feels like their vision of America is under attack? Well, it creates a climate of fear and resentment, right. which can be easily exploited by those seeking power. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of what we're seeing in American politics today. Yeah. The lines between us and them are getting blurrier. Right. And civil discourse is breaking down. It does feel like we're at a crossroads. Yeah. Are we going to continue down this path of division and exclusion, mm -hmm. or can we find a way to bridge these divides and build a more inclusive future? I mean, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. And I think the answer lies in our ability to engage in honest and respectful dialogue, mm -hmm. even when we disagree. Yeah. It's about recognizing that our differences are what make us strong. Right. Not what tear us apart. I like that, you know. We need to move beyond these simplistic binaries of yeah. American ideals versus the woke agenda right. and start engaging with these complex issues in a more nuanced and thoughtful way. Exactly. We need to listen to each other, Yeah. understand different perspectives, and find common ground. For sure. Because at the end of the day, we're all in this together. Yeah. And if we can't find a way to coexist peacefully, mm -hmm. we all lose. Right. This has been such an insightful conversation. Yeah, it has. It feels like we've just scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah of what it means to be American in 2024. Absolutely. Okay, so we've spent a lot of time unpacking Ramaswamy's vision. Yeah. We've heard his criticisms of the current state of things right. and explored the solutions he proposes. Mm. But like, what does all this mean for you know the average person listening in right now? Well, I think the big takeaway here yeah. is that American identity is not this static thing. Right. It's constantly evolving. Right. It's shaped by social movements, by political ideologies, by cultural shifts, mm -hmm. even by presidential campaigns like this one. Right. Ramaswamy is just one voice yeah. in this ongoing conversation. For sure. But he's definitely tapping into something. Right. This feeling out there, this mm -hmm. longing for a simpler time, yeah. a unified America rooted in tradition. And that longing for unity, especially during times of uncertainty and change. Yeah. It's powerful. It is. People crave stability. They want to feel like they belong. Right. But here's the thing. Yeah. This desire for unity can be manipulated. Oh, absolutely. It can be used to shut out anyone who doesn't fit a very specific definition of what it means to be American. Exactly. That's why we can't just passively absorb these messages. Right. We have to be critical. Yeah. We have to unpack the rhetoric. Hmm. examine the assumptions underneath. We have to ask ourselves, whose vision of America are we being sold here? Right. And who benefits from that vision? Because the answers to those questions, yeah. they have real world consequences. They do for all of us. Yeah. So as we wrap up this deep dive, mm -hmm. I want to leave you with a final question. Okay. If you had to define what it means to be American in 2024, yeah. what would you say? What values would you emphasize? What principles? What experiences? It's a question worth thinking about. It is. You yeah. know, it goes beyond the slogans and the sound bites. Allah. It gets to the core of who we are as a nation mm -hmm. and who we want to become. And ultimately, it's a question each of us has to answer for ourselves. That's a great point. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Yeah, thanks for having me. We hope it's given you some things to think about mm -hmm. and encouraged you to keep exploring these complex and ever-evolving questions. Absolutely. Thanks for listening.